Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Good Wednesday morning to you all. Hope you guys are doing great out there this morning and having a wonderful start to your day and a great week out there so far. Here to bring the latest on soon to be Hurricane Ernesto. And I say soon to be because it is on the verge of becoming a hurricane right this moment. I only have the latest 5 a.m. update. Another advisory will come out here in the next uh, hour. Um, and I have a feeling they'll upgrade this to Hurricane Ernesto. As of right now, it's a high end 70 mile per hour tropical storm. So what we'll do is we'll go over all the latest information and talk about what it's doing right now. It's bringing some big time impacts to Puerto Rico this morning as a nasty band is curving around the southern to southeast, the eastern side, the actual low level circulation of Ernesto. And that is moving right over Puerto Rico and surrounding areas. So we'll speak on that very briefly, I actually show you the radar out of Puerto Rico. And of course, we'll talk about what's going on with this storm, how it's uh, steadily strengthening right now. We'll go over the latest advisory information from the National Hurricane Center, the latest cone that we do have, and uh, who it could potentially hit on down the road over the next couple of days and eventually over the next few days as it gets closer to Canada. We'll go over all the latest model guidance. We'll talk about how this is most likely over the next couple of days going to have an opportunity to undergo a period of rapid intensification where it's now forecast to be a major hurricane category three or higher is considered a major hurricane so we'll speak on that um, we'll talk about steering currents we'll talk a little bit about impacts what we do know and then we'll break down the weather across the lower 48 for your wednesday for the second half of the video so if you guys have not subscribed certainly consider doing that like the video if you like it if anybody has anything that i can pray about or pray over as always please put those in the comments below asking for prayers that our soccer practice does not get canceled again it got canceled last night in fact i thought about doing a video last night but i was like you know what i've already got it made up my mind i was not going to do a video because i thought we were going to have soccer practice so we're going to have one more opportunity to do it before we have a game and that is friday night uh, so just asking for prayers that doesn't get canceled busy week too so just asking for prayers that we can make it through and i know we will uh, but anyways, let's get rocking and rolling this morning. So this is a look at high end tropical storm Ernesto. You can almost call it a hurricane and it'll upgrade to that probably the 8 a.m. advisory or the 11 a.m. advisory. But as you can tell, it, it kind of looks, you know, I was looking at this thing yesterday evening. It looks similar. The structure does. You got two huge areas of convection, one on the north side of the low actual low level circulation which is probably just north of puerto rico right here and then a huge blow up of deep convection on the south side of the low but this entire area and i would draw on this but you know drawing on it's kind of pointless because i don't have any colors are going to stand out with all of these colors showing up on this view here uh but there's a big nasty band pivoting over puerto rico right now and you know the deep convections indicated by the whites and even some of the purples and pinks you see on your screen and embedded in the whites this tells us we have colder cloud tops which means we have taller stronger updrafts so of course this is well on its way and intensifying as uh, i speak right now this morning it has been overnight very steadily nothing rapid but very steadily intensifying but that pace of intensification most likely we will pick up over the next uh, couple of days. So this is a look at it. Now we take a look at the actual radar out of um, uh, Puerto Rico here. Look at this band. And if you look really closely here, that is the actual center of the storm right here. It's almost kind of developing some sort of inner eye wall structure. But this nasty banding feature is pivoting right over uh, the Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, certainly the eastern <clears throat> excuse me. The eastern half of Puerto Rico is getting hit harder than the western half, but even the western half is getting impacts from this. But this is bringing flash flooding to these islands and some big time impacts. I'm sure some strong gusty winds. So you guys let me know if you're tuning in from Puerto Rico, what you're seeing out here. Uh, but you guys are getting a ton of rain right now. I would say that impacts based off radar, because I'm not hearing anything out of this region or seeing any video this morning on social media, at least from the last time I checked about an hour ago, um, based off radar, it looks like you guys are getting slammed right now. So definitely prayers out to you guys. Hopefully um, this can pull on out fast, but that's a look at the radar. So you guys are certainly getting some heavy impacts right now. If we actually look at the water vapor loop, 
you can see why this is really intensifying as you have a nice outflow expanding outward from the system air is being pushed out away from the system in the upper levels of the atmosphere above this actual low level circulation so this system's ventilating ventilating very well there is a little bit of shear that's been dealing with i would say on kind of the western kind of northwestern side of the system that could be holding the intensification process back but it's not holding it back to the point where it's, it's kind of messing with the intensity forecast. It's pretty much doing exactly what we were thinking it was going to do. The experts in the National Hurricane Center were thinking it was going to do in the shorter term. So certainly a very healthy, strong tropical storm could be a hurricane right now. Also, hurricane hunters are flying into this thing right now. So we go on and move past all this and the latest advisory from the National Hurricane Center. We do not have a new update. This is from 5 a.m. 70 mile per hour tropical storm, 60 knot tropical storm, 996 millibar. Now moving a full fledged northwest. So starting to move a little bit further north now than west and uh, about 16 miles per hour. So not as fast as the last couple of days, but still it, it's moving at a pretty decent pace, I would say. 70 mile per hour tropical storm. If it goes up another five miles per hour, it'll be considered a hurricane, which we're expecting here in the next advisory or two. If we look at the cone, guys, and we'll take a look at Zoom Earth, great thing to look at for the public, by the way. Uh, this is where the center of the storm is right at this moment, north of Puerto Rico. We'll kind of zoom in. So conditions will steadily improve throughout the day, but you guys will still have to deal with it throughout the next several hours. Like I said, we're expecting this to become a hurricane sometime in the next few advisories. So it's saying by 2 p.m., actually an 80 mile per hour category one hurricane. Uh, by the time we get into 2 a.m. tonight, a 100 mile per hour category two hurricane. And I've had some questions. There's not been a ton of rude comments or anything. And I, I got to stop just even bringing this up. But, you know, I think people's uh, definition of a powerful hurricane is different. To me, in my opinion, anytime you get over a 100 mile per hour hurricane, I would consider that a powerful hurricane. You know, a major hurricane by the National Hurricane Center is considered a category three or higher, 115 mile per hour or higher hurricane. So that's why I put in thumbnails, you know, um, and things like that. Because, I mean, if it's forecast to be a 100 mile per hour storm, 100 mile per hour winds, even though I know that that's mainly in the middle of the storm, that's a strong, powerful hurricane. So just quick note on that, quick tidbit, a forecast to become a 110 mile per hour category two hurricane by tomorrow afternoon so i mean between now and tomorrow afternoon forecast to intensify another 40 miles per hour so i would say that's a, a, a rapid pace of intensification and now thursday night into friday morning forecast to become a category three major 115 mile per hour hurricane so remember we were chattering about that you know i said that and guys, please don't think I'm, I'm blowing smoke up my rear end or, or anything like that. But, you know, I mentioned a few days ago, I thought this had the potential to become a major hurricane. I mean, and it's forecast to do so. And trust me, the National Hurricane Center set, saw it too. It's not like, oh, only Mitch West is the only one that saw it. That's not what I'm saying. Everybody saw this for the most part. Uh, but it, it's looking like one of those higher end scenarios could play out. And I would say this is not even a higher end scenario. I would say a Category 4 hurricane is the ceiling of this storm maybe maybe a little higher but still category three status and here comes bermuda showing up on your screen the center of the storm right now i mean could go as far as over here or over here i mean that's why the cone widens the actual center of the storm could go east or, or west of bermuda right now the confidence is is this gonna is this is gonna go west of bermuda so this would actually be worse news for Bermuda because it looks like that the worst conditions are going to be on the north, the east quadrant of this system. So um, you would actually want uh, this, the center of the storm to go probably east of Bermuda to see a little bit less impacts, still impacts, but less impacts. But I think confidence is there that we are absolutely a minimum going to see some sort of impacts in Bermuda as we are starting to get into after i would say friday evening as early as friday evening into friday night and saturday morning and this is going to make some sort of close pass saturday morning as a pretty powerful hurricane um, and then it begins to gradually weaken it begins to enter the cooler waters of the north atlantic and then by the time that we're in um, sunday night saying 2 a.m monday a 90 mile per hour category one hurricane but of course when these start to lose their tropical characteristics sometimes we can can be embedded into a cold front 
they really widen. They get huge. Their wind field expands. The winds in their wind field might not be as intense, but it expands when they uh, start to lose their tropical characteristics. But, um, I mean, look, the, the coastline of Nova Scotia is almost in the cone now. In fact, at the 8 a.m. advisory, you guys might be in the cone now. So here in the next several videos going forward, not so much this one, we're really going to start to dive deep into the potential impacts in Nova Scotia. And I say, and, and Newfoundland, I say potential because, guys, the models are still way back and forth. And I've been waiting until you guys are technically going to be in the cone before I really start to just get super detailed on the potential impacts because this could still go up to Newfoundland. It could go right into Nova Scotia. And if it goes right into Nova Scotia, it most likely will go on and trail off and hit Newfoundland too. But we're still trying to, and I just don't, just remember anything that I say in these videos, especially in the longer range of this, it's not set in stone. But we are going to talk heavily on you guys in this video too. Um, but the more... A classic look. This is actually a new cone from the National Hurricane Center they introduced. In fact, I actually like the old one better. But here's kind of the smoothed out look. Now you got the M showing up on your screen, which stands for major. So major hurricane now forecast. And if you look right here, guys, you see the actual X. That's where it was located about an hour or so ago. But you see kind of this orange yellowish color. That is where tropical storm force conditions extend outward. And if you notice, they extend um, off to the north and really off to the east of the center. So if the center of the storm goes west of Bermuda, that means the stronger east side of the storm is going to hit Bermuda the hardest. So now if we look at the latest model guides, so the latest GFS that we have, um, and we'll initialize this for this morning, GFS initializing this is a 994 millibar low. I think that's about right. I think it's a little bit deeper than a 996 right now because it is strengthening. <clears throat> but you keep this going. And guys, if I sneeze in this... Um, video at all i am now in the process of the sneezing phase of this little cold that i've had that hasn't really been bad at all so um uh sneezing uh might happen in this video it has not happened yet almost uh, 12 minutes in but as you can tell the number begins to drop on this millibar over the next several hours and then we get into tomorrow morning should be an it could be a 979 millibar low that would make it a category two hurricane bermuda is this very small speck right here i got my cursor over Watch what the GFS does. The latest one is pulling this north and then hooks it northeast pretty dramatically here as a major hurricane and actually just like cruises almost east-northeast at this point, more east than north, and goes south of Bermuda, makes a strong hook back north, and pulls the center of the storm actually east of Bermuda instead of west sometime Friday night and Saturday morning. And then it hooks this back like north, northeast, and here it goes, cruising to the north. And then we'll flip this uh, to this here. And this is showing Nova Scotia, Newfoundland, Prince Edward Island, New Brunswick, etc. And I'll mention more of these um, more like micro-geographical areas when we get a little bit closer here. Um, well, I'm sure we'll butcher some names for your folks in the uh, Atlantic Canada area too. You guys know how I do. Uh, but here comes the GFS. It's mit It completely misses you guys. Uh, brings some a little bit of rain to southeast Newfoundland, but altogether now the GFS wants to miss it. But watch when I show you the European model. It's like the and they do this. The GFS and the Euro have flipped. Um, but this heads on out. Uh, it doesn't doesn't bother uh, really Newfoundland or Nova Scotia. Now watch the Euro from overnight. This is wild. Uh, European gradually strengthens this. Um, remember the Euro has kind of a weaker bias, so. It only has this as a 990 millibar low, which is weird um, uh, tomorrow morning. It'll be much stronger than that, in my personal opinion. Maybe another 10 to 12 millibars uh, stronger than what it's showing. So Thursday morning still technically has like a low-end hurricane, Category 1, strong tropical storm. You know, this continues to move north and starts to move northeast and looks like it's heading right towards Bermuda, which is right here, but then takes a northerly jog here. Misses Bermuda well to the west. <clears throat> so the GFS misses it just to the east. The Euro misses it a good bit to the west to the point where you guys would just get some outer bands. It really wouldn't significantly impact you, I don't think. Uh, but this, the Euro is a little bit slower too. It seems like the more of a westerly track this takes, the slower a storm. From what I'm gathering with model guidance and steering currents. 
And then this continues to head just kind of wobble north in general. Deepens into like a 952 millibar low Sunday afternoon. Strong hurricane. And look how close it is off the coast of the eastern U.S. as we're moving into Sunday. I mean, it's not like close enough to bring any significant impacts, but it could bring a little bit of an enhanced moisture feed. The Euro now has this as a 948 millibar hurricane off the coast of southern New England. And unfortunately, you keep this going, guys. Look where this heads. Right into the central coastline of Nova Scotia. A little bit closer, kind of, a closer look. This is getting into Monday morning. I would say plows this, what, just um, just east of Halifax. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Nova Scotia brings comes up, brings... You know, impacts to Prince Edward Island, etc. I know there's another island in there. I'll start to mention more. Uh, I used to have that memorized when I was breaking down the tropics for you guys last year, but I'm sure somebody in Canada will tell me there's there's kind of two areas, one right here, one right here. Uh, but you know, if it hits Nova Scotia, it's going to hit Newfoundland too. You know, it's going to because it's going to be turning northeast and moving northeast. So this would come up and ride kind of the the western spine of Newfoundland bring big impacts as a strong storm system Monday into Tuesday. Then it heads on out. So here it comes slowly. Hits Nova Scotia. Comes up. Hits Newfoundland. This would bring a little bit of impacts also to probably um, New Brunswick. And then it heads on out. So <clears throat> scenarios we got to watch, guys. And if we look at the h Wharf model, which only goes out 126 hours, definitely has a slower scenario. Deepens this system. Comes up. Makes a close pass to Bermuda, but Bermuda's right here. This is Saturday afternoon. You got a major hurricane just to your west. Takes more of that westerly solution like the Euro. This continues to jog north, and it only goes out to about Sunday night and the Monday morning. And this looks like it's starting to move a little bit northeast of the final couple frames, but it's going to have to hook northeast fast if you were to keep on moving this um, particular model I think it would eventually hit somebody in the Southeast Canada. Now, if you look at the, what is this, the HFA model, hurricane model, moves this a little bit faster. It takes, you know, kind of the same jog as the uh, as the European model and the uh, H-Wharf model. Has a major hurricane, even stronger than the H-Wharf model, 957 west of Bermuda. Saturday morning, this continues to bob and weave kind of north, uh, northwest sometimes, uh, north, northeast sometimes. But in, in general, I'll explain to you why this kind of takes, goes northeast and then jogs north right here kind of this weekend. And there's people probably wondering, why does this why, is, why does this not just have a clear path to turn northeast out to sea? I'll talk to you why here in a second. But, you know, we're getting to Sunday afternoon and then we're getting, I mean, it's a little bit quicker. So we get into the middle of the night, Sunday night, and a Monday morning. Folks, this looks like it's heading right towards Nova Scotia as a powerful storm system. So we'll really zoom into the winds, stuff like that, um, here in the next video. The video is to come, I would say. But if you look at the European ensemble, uh, Bermuda is that little speck, black speck right here. A lot of these members go right over Bermuda, but more of them go west of Bermuda. And then here we go. A lot of members go into Nova Scotia. Almost all of the members now, except a few, do go up in the Newfoundland that you see right here. So the chances of impact in Canada, Southeast Canada, have definitely went up. And I expect you guys to be in the cone in the next few updates. Now, the Hurricane Hunters are going into the system right now. In fact, <clears throat> looks like they just went through a real big burst of convection where they found 50 to 55 knot flight level winds, which is you know, over 60 to 65 mile per hour winds. So definitely in that little first pass, not enough to make this a hurricane, but they're still flying throughout this right now. So we'll see what they find. But uh, as far as the environment conditions that's going to support rapid intensification potentially over the next two days, well, right now, like I drew on the water vapor loop, air is being dispersed out from the system. And this is this is right at this moment. We're going to actually just take a look at the Euro. So you see these arrows, how they're getting dispersed out like this, like that getting dispersed out like this, pushed away like this. Um, it's, it gets a little weirder right here as we're getting kind of a more flow from uh, the southwest. This is actually uh, providing, I think, a little bit of shear on the northwest side of the system. 
but in general, an excellent outflow for at least gradual strengthening. No tropical system can completely get away from shear. There's always a little bit, but as we move this forward, uh, it undergoes a period of intensification that I think will bring it closer uh, to a major hurricane, especially as it gets right into here, I would say. You know, it could rapidly intensify probably as it gets closer to Bermuda, as just a lot of air is being dispersed away from the system. Um, and one thing I think that we could look at here is showing the HFA model and the environment for it. And it really indicates well, I think, the period of rapid intensification it goes. See how that number's beginning to drop more and more. And uh, we'll actually stop it right, uh, trying to find, actually, just to stop it right here. Air is being pushed out away from the system at a pretty rapid pace. These are winds at 200 millibars, guys, 35, 40,000 feet up in the air. Uh, so this is air well above the actual mid to low level circulation. So air, you see these little arrowheads embedded in these lines getting pushed away from the system. We call this a nice anti-cyclonic flow at overhead of this system. It means as air rises, that allows for more air uh, to, um, air rises, that gets dispersed out. That allows for more air to rise, then that gets dispersed out. Rising air aids in shower and storm development. If shower and storm development can continue to uh, get going, then it creates a very moist environment for these tropical systems. And of course, tropical systems love moist environment. It allows them to improve their structure, therefore intensify. So uh, that's what's going on. That's what's going to happen with this system over the next couple of days as it intensifies, as it nears Bermuda in the coming days. You mix that with the fact that this is going to be cruising over some bathtub waters throughout this region right here. There's uh, Bermuda right into here. So this entire area is working with uh, sea surface temperatures in about the mid 80s. So very warm waters. You can see the waters are starting to warm back up off the coast of the southeast now as they were cooled by Debbie. So those um, waters are starting to warm up, but not talking too much on that right now, but we'll continue to move forward. We look at steering currents, guys. Now, this is turning north because of a weakness in the pattern right here. So we'll initialize this for, um, this is for this evening. So you see this white area right here between this blue area, which is Ernesto, and this blue area, which is an upper trough or an upper low right here. The flow around this blue area is going to like this. The flow around a ridge is going to go like this. A ridge of high pressure is indicated in the orange warmer colors. Trough of low pressure, or just low pressure in general, is indicated on this by uh, the blue colors. Okay, This is steering currents in the upper levels of the atmosphere. So a stronger storm system is always going to want to turn north. They always, uh, When they get stronger, they always want to be pulled north and uh, want to get poleward. They want to gain latitude, want to get further north. So that's exactly why this is in the process of turning north right now. There's an obvious weakness. There's no ridge on top of the system, forcing it more zonal, more kind of uh, east to west or, or whatever. It's just going to turn north. So this will continue to do so. Now we'll keep this in motion. Here it comes. That's Ernesto. It's also going to get yanked a little bit right here northeast. You see how it's kind of gradually starting to turn northeast? And that is because flow around what I will call a weakening upper low upper trough is going like this. So that is why our system kind of goes like this. And then it begins to turn kind of northeast right into here. Now watch what happens. This upper low, this area in blue to the north of Ernesto, which is right here. This area right here. Watch how it sort of just leaves Ernesto hanging. It weakens, it heads on out, and it detaches. The main flow that's pulling Ernesto northeast kind of detaches from Ernesto. And as that happens, once again, it's going to start dealing with what it's dealing with right now as we're getting into this weekend. You have another weakness where this storm, Ernesto, can kind of can just control its own destiny. Uh, so, most most of the time, they will continue to head northeast, but there's going to be a ridge that kind of builds on the northern portion of this storm system that I think is just going to really prevent it from abruptly turning uh, northeast. And here it is. Bang. Ridge builds right on top of the system right here. So, of course, flow around this ridge is going to kind of go like this. And then you got another trough digging down right here where the flow around this trough is going to dig like this. Now, that doesn't mean this system is just going to go right here. Just the process of forward momentum and the fact that this is such a powerful uh, 
storm system on the Euro as we're getting into Sunday morning is going to still allow this system to just really chug off to the north in general. Okay, you're going to need one heck of a powerful ridge right into here. Very strong ridge to really abruptly force this a little bit further west into New England. And you're going to need a trough, a stronger trough influence that's a little bit closer <coughs> to Ernesto right here to really yank this into like southern New England. Okay, can't rule anything out, right? But you're going to need it. For real, if 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 you if you if you're if your nesto is going to get yanked a little bit further west, um, but I think regardless, this does not have a clean escape route just to head on out to sea right here, and that's because you got this pesky ridge right here with the flow going around like this that sort of uh, stops the forward northeast momentum. Now it doesn't fully stop it, but it just cannot turn quick enough at the end of the day. And then, therefore, impact happens in Nova Scotia, as you can tell, and then Newfoundland. <clears throat> so that's what happens. It's a little bit different on the GFS, but that's steering currents. I hope that makes sense. I'm always big on trying to explain that in a way where you guys can understand. But as far as impacts, guys, uh, Bermuda now stands an 80 to 90 percent chance to see tropical storm force winds. That's 40 mile per hour winds or higher. The chances to see around, I would, might as well say, 60 mile per hour winds or higher. For Bermuda has now increased for uh, up towards uh, almost got a sneeze coming, guys. All right, go away. <clears throat> has increased to a 50 to 60 percent chance to see 60 mile per hour wind gusts or higher. Now, what's the chances of seeing hurricane force winds, which is 74 miles per hour or higher? I mean, guys, it's up to a 30 to 40 percent chance of Bermuda now. Now, let's go back to the tropical storm force winds here. <clears throat> this, the chance to see tropical storm force wind gusts have actually been introduced now in Nova Scotia. So uh, it's on, guys. I mean, this looks like it's going to head up into your neck of the woods. We just got to figure out all the fine details and where exactly this is going to make a landfall. Now, some people are starting to wonder what happens after Ernesto. Well, the Weather Prediction Center actually issued a graphic yesterday. <laughs> basically highlighting a period of high end activity as we near the end of this month, which I mean, if you think about it, it's here just in the next 10 days or so. So I don't, I, I think what's going to happen is by the time we're done discussing Ernesto here in the next week or five to six days, I think we'll already be watching another area. And that's kind of what happened with Debbie, which led us to Ernesto. So yeah, I don't, I don't think we're slowing down, um, but we will begin to dive more into that probably in the coming videos about what I'm seeing going forward. But um, as far as what's going to happen today, guys, we have little uh, areas of energy, one surging through the Midwest. We'll have another area that surges through this region uh, today that's actually promoting a slight risk of severe weather across areas of the Midwest and the Plains. We got a lot of energy up here in Montana in the form of some rain, some showers. Front has sagged all the way down into South Georgia, areas of Alabama. This is allowing for a little bit of cooler air all the way down to areas of the deep south states. In fact, I think my house has hit uh, 69 degrees, so we've gotten sub 70 uh, for the first time since like early July. So I'm actually looking forward to walking outside and, and feeling a little bit of cooler air this morning. Uh, I wouldn't call it cool, but comfortable is probably the right word for it. But uh, a nice air mass over a good chunk of this uh, of the country a good chunk of the country is doing pretty well this morning as far as temperatures. It's just the southern plains is going to be brutally hot today, unfortunately. So watches, warnings, and advisories. There's those heat advisories for the areas I just mentioned. We got heat advisories in the orange, heat advisories um, down in the Florida, whole entire state of Louisiana, good chunk of Mississippi, all of eastern Texas, central eastern Oklahoma all the way up to Kansas, Missouri, Arkansas. So a lot of heat advisories out there, even some excessive heat warnings in the purple where it's going to be extremely hot and humid. Flood watches up for the heart of Missouri, areas up here in North Dakota also. If we look at the excessive rainfall outlook, guys, and if you, if you live in the yellow area, that's where we have at least a 15% risk of rainfall exceeding flash flood guidance within 25 miles uh, in any given location. So we could get a lot of rain between what's falling right now and what could fall again later tonight. And that's why we do have flood watches up for areas of Missouri and surrounding states. The uh, Storm Prediction Center, guys, there's a very large marginal risk extending from eastern Idaho all the way up to Dakotas, all the way down to the panhandle of Texas and Oklahoma, 
all the way over to western Illinois. Now, there's a slight risk for areas in the Midwest, right where Missouri, um, Nebraska, Kansas, Iowa all kind of come together. <clears throat> Omaha, Lincoln, down to Kansas City included into this. You have a level two out of five risk. Tornado risk, you got a 2% risk of a tornado. We haven't seen this in a while. A 2% risk of a tornado. Well, I'll say a while. You know, we just saw a 5% risk here from Debbie. So it hasn't been that while. I guess my memory is all foggy. Um, but the green area, that's where we have a 2% risk of a tornado within 25 miles in a given location. This does include Kansas City up to Omaha, Lincoln, Des Moines. So we got to watch out for that. Wind threat, 15% risk and winds exceeding 55 to 60 miles per hour. And then the hail threat, 15% risk in the yellow area of hail exceeding one inch in diameter or larger. The southeast today, a little energy will continue to move across the Mississippi River Air Delta region. Um, but as we're getting into this afternoon, some pop-up downpours are possible in southern Mississippi. Same thing for like Florida, southeast Georgia, the low country of South Carolina, where we still have just enough moisture in the atmosphere to get some storms going. And even get some downpours around Asheville today. It's very possible southwest North Carolina. Downpours are possible in the uh, Triangle of North Carolina. Not a very active weather day across the southeast. Just some scattered pop-up uh, downpours out here. Possible in southern Mississippi, southeast Louisiana also. So not a super active weather day at all. Then we get into tomorrow morning. Pretty quiet start, it looks like, uh, to your Thursday. Uh, northeast. A uh, quiet start this morning. Not a whole lot going on. We're going to get some pop-up showers or storms. Maybe could ride down the valley of New York State. Uh, kind of a north to south flow. Some downpours are possible throughout Mass, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine. Uh, not a big day. It'll be very hit or miss. Some people will get it. Some people won't. And then it'll diminish with the loss of daytime heating. Could be left over um, into the uh, down east areas of Maine. Tonight, maybe a more organized area of showers and rain is possible for you folks. By the time we wake up tomorrow morning, it should be a quiet start to your Thursday. <clears throat> the South Central U.S., hot, humid, not a lot of relief as far as rainfall to cool you down in the afternoon and evening. Could get some storms that'll fire and uh, areas of Kansas, as you can see up here. Uh, uh, and you know, this is where we have that slight risk up here that we'll zoom into here in a second. Uh, some strong to severe storms will form later this evening. And these, you know, like damaging wind, hail, tornado risk is possible with this. And then they'll trail off throughout the Midwest. And then we'll have a pretty rainy start for the Midwest states. Uh, here comes the sneeze. Uh, they're kicking my butt this morning, guys. Uh, but we're going to have a rainy, stormy start for the Midwest, most likely for certain areas for your Thursday morning. Now, this is probably going to be the most active area of the U.S. today. Uh, we're getting into this afternoon a lot of storm activity cruising through north dakota this will extend all the way down to south dakota could get an organized line of nasty storms that moves through later this afternoon into this evening through central uh through the heart of south dakota right up to north dakota these storms could pack a punch so if you're tuning in from this area look at these storms this is around 5 p.m or so uh this afternoon to this evening this is a pretty nasty line of storms moving through the area in fact you might end up getting a slight risk from this issued the next uh, update from the storm prediction center but then we got to watch out for our friends down here in iowa these storms actually trail off in the minnesota probably lose some steam so southwest minnesota later tonight uh some storms can move through uh some storms possible for uh des moines uh in the entire state of iowa and then as we're getting into tomorrow morning probably a rainy star from chicago up to milwaukee rockford all the way down to peoria springfield all the way down to St. Louis, rain possible um, up here for, for further north in Wisconsin. We got a lot of rain up here in northeast Nebraska. I'm sorry, I'm sorry northeast North Dakota, and then uh, northern Minnesota. But a little bit closer look at the severe weather threat today for Nebraska. These storms will fire up right in here, and this is around 9 to 10 p.m. They could be producing some large hail, damaging winds, even a tornado risk in this area right here. Just want to pay attention to these. Don't let them catch you by surprise if you live in Lincoln up to Omaha just because this particular run is missing you guys. They very well could be a little bit further north. Kansas City, some storms later tonight, and then they'll cruise on through. And then we move a little bit further to the east. Definitely a stormy midday as possible for areas of like eastern Missouri. But, it, you know, this particular run of the herd model does not have these storms kind of maintaining 
But then the storms move in later this evening. Look up there in northwestern areas of Missouri, up there in uh, the southern half of Iowa. These storms look to pack a pretty hefty punch. And you just want to watch with all these storms as a boundary in place, a tornado threat is possible, along with flash flooding. <clears throat> and then we're getting into tomorrow midday. And uh, we have to see what happens for tomorrow. But uh, it does show a little bit of that tornado risk. You see the rotating updrafts here that had the possibility to be here in areas of uh, Iowa, northern Missouri. And we will back this up and look at uh, like Nebraska, for example. And early on, I'm telling you, watch out for these storms in Nebraska later on this evening. These storms highlighted in this bluish green area slashes here. This tells us where we could have some rotating updrafts, some rotating storms that could produce a few tornado warnings out here in Nebraska today. So definitely be aware of that. And then if we're speaking on rainfall, guys, um, I do want to show this area. Just take a look at the Midwest here. Uh, man, my nose is irritating me, guys. Oh, that's really glitchy. That's terrible. Come on, guys. <laughs> um, let's look at the blend of all models here. And let's just take it all the way to about midday Thursday. So it is highlighting an area in northern Missouri that could get an inch or two of rain. Same thing with southwestern Iowa. Uh, definitely a good bit of rain in this area. That's why you do have the risk of excessive rainfall. So out west, not as active as probably yesterday and the day before, but we are going to have some storms that will cruise west to east <clears throat> throughout areas of eastern Idaho, maybe Montana, especially down here to Wyoming. A little bit in northeastern Utah, especially the northern half of Colorado. Uh, they could be severe, so don't let these catch you by surprise. Higher elevations could get a little bit of snow as we're starting to get deeper in the summer. Seasons are going to change up here in this area of the country here soon. Um, so we're getting a little bit closer. I love to see the blue on the map. You guys know I love snow. Um, if you're a new viewer and uh, you don't know much about my love for winter weather, uh, now you do. I love it which I was born and raised in South Carolina. I'm one of those really rare Southern people that wishes that I lived in a state that was further North that just purely do off do because of the weather, nothing else. Uh, but yeah, I live here in South Carolina where we hardly ever get any winter weather. We don't even get any freezing rain anymore. Uh, but uh, conditions across the Ohio Valley, the mid South, the Northeast, very nice, pleasant, lower humidity, of course, you get down here to the Southern Plains, awful 90s, low 100s, high humidity. And then out West, it's not really hot anywhere. In fact, it's a little bit below average for certain areas. So that's all I got, guys. Thank you all for tuning in. God bless all y'all. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. Talk to you soon.